Chris, how big a deal is it in your estimation that Hillary Clinton used a private email server at her home in New York to do State Department business? I think it's a very big deal. First of all, it went absolutely against the guidelines, not only the guidelines that the Obama administration set out for all of its top officials at the very start of the administration, it went against the guidelines that Hillary Clinton sent out in 2011 to her State Department, which was, unless it's an emergency, use your government email account to do your communications. She not only didn't use her e the government account, she didn't even use a government server. She used her own private server, and there's one only one plausible explanation for this, which is she wanted complete control over every message that she sent. Is this a big enough deal, do you think, to affect her presidential candidacy? Well, it's certainly enough to affect it. Whether it's enough to derail it, I don't know. Chris, last week you and I talked about the impending uh, speech by Bibi Netanyahu to a joint meeting of Congress on the day of. There was tons of analysis. In the final analysis, did it really change anything about Iran? You know, it's interesting. I, I, I was just thinking as you were asking that question, I don't think so. I mean, I think that, that the people that had doubts about it still have doubts. Uh, but, but I think people really want to wait and see what the deal is, if there is a deal that is announced at the end of March. Chris, I know you're going to have Representative John Lewis on the program this weekend, of course, a national hero, and especially so here in Atlanta. Well, I got to tell you, I spent uh, about an hour with him in his congressional office, and, and if you ever get the chance to do it, go, because, I mean, it is filled with pictures uh, of, of John Lewis on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. He was the guy leading the charge on Bloody Sunday, a huge blown-up picture, which you'll see in our interview uh, of a, an Alabama state trooper beating the heck out of him, uh, pictures of him. He's the last living person who spoke at the March on Washington in 1963 when, uh, when Dr. King, of course, gave the I Have a Dream speech. I mean, it is like a time capsule in history. 